This is Craig Stumbaugh at uh, ISE 2025. Uh, I'm here in our booth where you can see all of our new products. Uh, we're showing our Zavis Direct VLED product, which is integrated with the megapixel processor. Uh, we've got all three pixel pitches here. So you can see we've got uh, 0.7 in a 5K 21 by 9 display uh, as our centerpiece of our is it video wall. Yes. So and then off to the side, we're showing each one of the three pixel pitches that we have uh, in our portfolio. We've got 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 1.2 millimeter of our Zavis XP product. Uh, those can be designed and configured in any size wall for any type of application. So there's a 0.7 right now on this? The one you're looking at currently is the uh, 0.7, and it's a 21 by 9 5K video wall. We're driving right. that with one of our Catalyst processors and our Canvas software. Uh, and we're showing how we have the ability to window that with any source or any type of content that you want to see for command and control or operation type of applications. So for example, right here, if, if you were sitting here, yes. uh, it looks like you're in a NASA control center or something like that? What yes. could it be? So, so this is what you would normally see from an operator's uh, workstation oh. position and how they would be sitting directly in front of their workstation display, which is also using one of our PANA 34 displays, uh, to look at the information or data or dashboards they need to do for their job or their role within the organization and then the video wall in front of them creates that common operating picture of all of the sources in the environment. Uh, so how good is um, uh, this kind of video wall uh, for the eyes, uh, for, the, uh, for the productivity sure. uh, organization? So because Jupyter has uh, embedded our product or embedded the megapixel processor into our direct VLED product, we're able to provide the highest refresh rates uh, the highest uh, color bandwidth and color gamut of our system. So it is less fatiguing than any other direct VLED product in the market. And it also is able to maintain that uniformity uh, at any light level output. So that is the advantage of having the megapixel integration in our solution. And how far could you be from the display and totally see everything fine? It just, just make the screen bigger and then it can be further away? It, it, exactly. So the idea with pixel pitch is uh, just for a, a rough, easy calculation is whatever that pitch number is, multiply it by 10 and that's the closest viewing position. So at 0.7, roughly seven feet away, uh, this is where you'd want uh, to be to see the pixels dissolve. And then as you move further back, uh, it continues to get smoother and clearer. Nice. I guess there must be some really awesome customers that do have some amazing yes. setups with this. Very true. So we're seeing more and more uh, command and control applications deploy direct VLED, uh, moving away from cubes, which was you know a, a mainstream solution many years ago, uh, to flat panels and now to direct VLED because the cost of ownership is significantly longer, uh, less, and the life cycle of the product is much longer. And a little bit like the NASA Control Center, you have a big screen, there can be a bunch of colleagues in the room, they can yes. all see the data. Correct. The viewing and angles on, on direct VLED are, are very wide so that you can see uh, all the content and all the detail from almost any position in the room. Nice. What do we see here? So here you're looking at uh, our PANA 81T, uh, which is a touch display. And what we're doing on here is we're running one of our Canvas clients on the OPS PC that's in the PANA 81, and that allows us to interact with the video wall and also with any of the other content or applications that are running locally on the uh, nice. OPS PC of this You need display. a beefy computer to run this it's built in. graphics? It's a, it's a built-in option in the PANA displays. It can be very high resolution? Yep, and then that's mounted on a, a salamander motorized mount that allows you to move that up and down and also angle or tip that. You can show it move? Oh, do you want to show it move? Yep, sure. So we can yeah. show that uh, so you can kind of see how that works. So we can raise that up to any operating height you would need. And then depending upon the application, you can tip that uh, either flat, if you want to use it for a planning table, strategy table type of application, or if you want to bring that up and use it more as a, a giant remote control for your environment. Many command centers are now deploying this in that type of application where they can orchestrate the entire room environment from that position. Nice, because you also need to be able to nicely control 
the giant video wall with all kinds of inputs. Correct. This could be one of them. Correct. And you can do that from any of our oh, Canvas sorry, sorry. clients or from uh, the Panda display that's running a Canvas client on it. But any Canvas client, whether it's in the room or outside, you can manage the system. What do you show there? So this is a, a concept that we're showing. Um, this is just kind of a, a, a concept piece that we brought to the show and some new technology for driving displays and decoding sources uh, in a different process than we traditionally do. And it's, it's something that, that we're experimenting with, but we wanted to kind of bring it and, and show it at the show. Uh, Sparking new ideas. Yes. All right. Is it related with the megapixel also or something No, else? it has nothing to do with the megapixel. So our, our core business originated 44 years ago uh, on the video wall processing manufacturer side. And that's what we continue to do today for command and control applications. So that is one of our uh, video wall processors. All right. Should we have a look over there? Sure. On the other side. So as we move through the booth, uh, here in, in the center position, we've got uh, a rack of our video wall processors. Uh, that you're looking at and in the rack uh, at the bottom you see our canvas element or catalyst element running canvas uh, and above that you see the catalyst V or catalyst 5 as we refer to it um, and that's what's driving the uh, 0.7 Zavis wall with the megapixel uh, processor behind that and then above that is our pixel net processor which is a modular architecture that has unlimited scalability for inputs and outputs and driving multiple walls in a single platform. So you can put some HDMI in, or is it over IP, or how does it work? Correct. It is, so any type of source that you have, whether it's uh, SDI, HDMI, Display Port, web pages, IP streams, it has the ability to accommodate any number of inputs from any of those source types and drive hundreds of displays, whether they're in a video wall orientation or distributed throughout an environment. And what do we see there? Yeah, so in the middle section here, this is uh, our Pana 105D in a portrait uh, installation, and we're using this to show a signage application for it. The 105D, uh, again, being 21 by nine and 5K resolution, uh, is eight feet tall. So it gives you a very life-size uh, image on there if you're putting people or models or things like that. Uh, and it gives you a great representation of, of what the content is that you're trying to convey in your application or your retail uh, environment. It's a great way to show a whole person. Yes, yes, we can put Shaq up there. We can put Shaquille O'Neal up there full size and still have room above him. Right. And let's have a look over there. Sure. So as we work our way around over here, um, the displays in this area are being driven by the PixelNet processor that we saw earlier. And moving from left to right, you see the Pana 81 here, which is on the left. Uh, and here we're decoding multiple streams. But that is uh, what we're identifying as a wall in our environment. And we're driving that independent from what's over here in the middle. In the middle, we have a Zavis 1.2 direct LED wall with a megapixel processor behind it. And that's also being driven by PixelNet. And we're windowing that with different sources that are in a, a video wall application or environment. And then as we move to the right, there's another Pana 81. So we're looking at this as three independent walls with any of the sources in the PixelNet environment available to any of them, any size, anywhere. And how do customers consider which one is good for them? Uh, it really depends on, on their environment. Number of users, viewing distance, amount of content or data they need to view uh, helps design uh, how that system is going to be configured. And the latest technology of the, the micro LED or the, those uh, direct view LED and stuff like that, yes. it so, really enables a whole bunch of new stuff for your company, right? It, it is. So we introduced uh, and we pioneered the 21 by 9 5K uh, space with the Panda displays, which are LCD, back in 2020. And we're on our third generation of product now. And from that, we also introduced the Zavis Extreme uh, XP uh, LED, which is the direct LED product. And we can do that again in 21 by 9 or, or any aspect that you need to do for your application. And some of the micro LEDs get smaller and smaller at that pitch. You can do more and more stuff with that. More you can. More resolution. Yeah. The more pixels you have, the, the easier it is to split that up with more and more sources and maintain the image quality that you need to see. 
Obviously that's for more intimate environments uh, where you need to have closer viewing distances because as your viewing distance uh, increases, you can use a lower pixel pitch and you don't have to spend the type of money uh, that you would need to on a, on a lower pitch product. Nice. And uh, over here, uh, false Yeah, so here you're looking at our third touch. generation of Pana. This is a Pana 105 XTM. Fourth, so, yeah, fourth right? Fifth, fifth, third gen. So this okay. is third generation. Um, and what makes this unique is it's three times as bright as the 105D that we saw earlier in portrait. It has over 2,000 points of backlight, so you get better uniformity. And you also have a, a thinner overall display, and it's a little bit lighter. So you can touch this one. This, and this one's a touch. So you can get this both in touch and non-touch. Right now we're playing a video on here, so there's nothing to interact with, because it's not. Yeah. So we can touch that and come back down to the desktop, and you can see how we can integrate that and, and come back to the video back and forth. But we also use these, um, predominantly you'll see them in Zoom and Teams rooms. So it's integrated with Microsoft Teams, front row, uh, as well as Zoom. And then it's got some nice anti fingerprint. Yes. Uh, and also uh, it's matte, it doesn't reflect too much lights. So all of our Panda displays are using a, a matte finish on them so that you don't have that glare from room lighting or ambient light from a window or anything like that. So it's more aesthetically pleasing and easier to view the content and the information that's on it. Could it be scratch proof? People with, uh, with the rings and stuff, it's not gonna scratch it? No, up. they won't scratch it, yeah. There's a, there's a protective layer of glass on there that, that you won't scratch that. All right, yeah. cool. So that's a great show here, the ISE 2025? Yes, it is, it is. It's, it's been a great show. This is only, uh, you know, day two. We're halfway through and, and we've had, you know, thousands of visitors come through here. So, uh, you know, very happy to, to have this here. And then the last, the last part of our booth is we partnered with our friends at Theory Audio. Uh, yeah. And we provided, uh, they're providing a, a listening experience or a listening room here. Is it inside? Uh, there's a demo going, but you can look through the, the huh. window there. Um, and, and in the Theory uh, demo, we also have one of our Pana 105 displays that they're using for part of their presentation. Uh, but Theory's been a great partner of ours for the last three or four years in, in several trade shows that we've done together. Unique immersive audio and visual experience. Immersive, uh, is it somehow like a little bit like 3D audio or something? No. It feels like you're there? It, it does feel like that. Um, and, and that has to do with the design of their technology in both their speakers and their processors that they manufacture.